Hello makers! So, I got back from Murph. I uploaded a video yesterday. And one of the things, one of, one of the many things that a lot of people actually mention at Murph is how much they miss my vlogs. Now I'm gonna be honest, I, I did not stop the vlogs because I don't enjoy doing them, but I honestly didn't think they were that popular or that liked. Um, views didn't really account for all the feedback I got, but so I said, Okay, let's make some more vlogs. So there's quite a lot to talk about. Um, a few things that I did not do a vlog about were, first of all, this gorgeous blue teal wall behind me. It's kind of hard to get the right color on the camera. I also did this, and this is just simple wood paneling, and I did a bench. I, that's, I did that bench. I made something else. See, I am a maker. Contrary to popular belief, I don't just copy things, I make things. So yeah, this just makes my life easier because I can just, you know, screw things in the wood and then unscrew and change around however I want so yeah that makes my life much easier plus it actually looks neat I have like finally I have some spool shelves um, those are like a, a remake of Joel's spool shelves um, which work well for me uh, I have to modify them a bit because we don't get two by fours here or one by twos it's Europe it's metric anyway so a lot has been happening in the background and I've been hinting about some designs I've been doing for my next lamp it is going to be a lamp now the last lamp I did quite popular I'm really happy that it was liked but I wanted to do something a bit more um, I had a lot of people uh, talk to me about the Wemos D1 it's uh, it's a node MCU basically it's like a little Arduino with Wi-Fi integrated so my next version which should be launched later this week um, will have that um, I've been prototyping and prototyping more prototyping my table is an absolute mess but yeah lots of parts to prototype I do have a final version uh, it's a final prototype I'm just gonna show you what it looks like I'm not gonna show you how it works and all the little tricks but that's basically it. Um, it's no, leave that there. Um, so it comes in many parts. It has a gear. To, I'll try to get this out without breaking anything. So yeah, this is the inside. Um, as you can see, there's a stepper motor. This is the Node MCU. There's a butt converter. Once again, there's a switch. Um, stepper driver, the reason why I used once again, because like so many people ask me, why don't you just use a five volt power supply? Because I don't have one. Not everyone has them. So I use um, a step down transformer. So any power supply I can, I have, I can use, and I can just convert to a five volt, which works. So yeah, that's all you get to see about that. So at Murph, I spoke to Bontech. Bontech. Um, this is the Mark III extruder which I'll be putting on the well the mark 3 um, I will be changing obviously since I'm going to do the conversion I will change the throat on the e3d hot end um, to have a two millimeter through as Joel mentioned in one of his latest videos so because I, I, I there's a special material I'm going to use for this particular lamp and yeah it's going to be printed with this so I'm really really looking forward to that also Astrobox sent me a seriously nice goodie bag. It has two Astroboxes um, or Astro Touch screens uh, with Pi inside and an Astrobox Pi. Um, plus, I also have a Pi myself. So, I'll be doing this conversion so I can just automate the whole 3D printer system that I have here. It'll probably go on the Mark 3s mainly, but I'll try to mix and match with other um, with other printers. Also Wham Bam sent me their flex blade system. This is a 30 by 30 flex blade which I will be putting on the Artillery X1 S1 Sidewinder 3D printer. Yeah, that one. Um, it's, I'm, I'm actually, I really love that printer. It's doing beautifully. I think it's probably the first proper competitor to the CR10. I think this is everything the CR10S Pro should have been, to be completely honest. I really like it, so I'm really looking forward to getting that review out. And also just to give you a hint of everything else that I'll be working on. Well, some other things I'll be working on. Um, CDs, 
Remember once I did a video on the small pepper, it's like a tiny whoop, I, I printed a frame. Well, these are two more of those and another one which has brushless motors. Uh, this thing is fast. I'm going to be, the reason why I bought three is because I will be doing some really fun projects. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, there's, what else? A couple of things coming from Murph, which I ordered. I'm, I don't wanna speak about those just yet. This is in front of my desk. This is what you never see on the videos. It looks an absolute mess at the moment, but that's gonna be cleaned up soon, soon enough. Uh, but you can see the Zortrax Inkspire here. I will be doing a review on that. It's, it's a very good, expensive, but very good um, resin 3D printer. Before I forget, down here, see that? That is a rep box. I got that rep box from Repcord uh, while at Murph. It has custom side panels. Actually, you know what? Let me show you. How cool is that? Those are my custom side panels. So that will end up going up there. Um, because then underneath there is the MMU2, but I will also have the, um, the Palette 2 Pro going up here. So that will simply make my life easier. What else, what else? Ah, yeah, okay. So I did the Mark 3S upgrade on the MMU2. So, well, this is the Mark III with the MMU2, but now it's an MMU2S. So as you can see, that is the new extruder assembly. It is printed in um, filamentive CF PEG. Um, it looks absolutely awesome. This is the new filament sensor. So it's kind of like mechanical and optical at the same time. So the way it works is you have an arm up here, and if the filament runs out, that moves out of the way and it triggers the filament sensor. Um, but yeah, that's mainly, I also did a Mark 2.5 S upgrade on this one here. Um, this was my first ever Mark II. This is what this channel started on. It's still here, still the same. This is the one I constantly keep on upgrading. Um, it will try to remain as stock as possible. One more thing I want to mention, um, I think maybe the last thing, because this is, th this vlog is actually taking quite a lot, I have a lot to say, so yeah. Um, a lot of people have been asking me about the time lapses I've been doing recently, uh, because they're loving them. And I admit, they look absolutely beautiful. I'm not using Octolapse. The reason why I don't use Octolapse is because, to me it's a bit of a hassle. Um, and, I, I don't want to stay moving the Octopi uh, from one printer to the other. So what I did was I looked at Devin's video, uh, Devin Montes from Make Anything 3D. He had hacked the time-lapse uh, system on the Ender 3 and I kind of ported that onto my Mark 3s. So if you go here, you can see that I have this pocket over here. Then I have my wireless remote. I designed that arm. So what happens while it's printing, it just moves here, then moves slowly to, um, to focus and then press the shutter. And the camera would be situated here. So every layer that it finishes, just moves to the side and triggers that. Now, the beautiful thing about this for me is that I have designed this on several printers. So all I have to do is just take this out, go to another one, shove it in there. Once I'm done with that, take it out. I did one for my Alpha YZ30, just put it in there, and I have the arms always ready. Now, the only reason why I won't do a video on this is because, well, Devin made a video on this, but what I can do is I can release the files for the Mark III. The only problem with that is it will only work with this particular trigger button. And this was, it wasn't cheap, it was about 45 bucks, but it works really well, especially for time lapses. And this is for the Panasonic. Um, I don't know if it's exactly the same size for the Canon, for example, because they need a different uh, adapter. Um, but just in case, I'll leave links in the video description. So that is it for today. Uh, this vlog, I was meant to do this vlog for like a week long vlog, but turned out to be, um, yeah, it's, it's Sunday morning. I'm getting ready because I have to do a live stream tonight. I'm gonna be putting the red box together. Um, 
One more thing before I go, because it's very important for me to mention this. Um, when I did the review of the Z-Morph, I did mention that that was on loan from Z-Morph for a few months, possibly a year, in order for me to do some projects. Z-Morph have reached out to me after the review to tell me that they want me to keep the Z-Morph because they like the projects I do, they like the ideas they have, and they like the way I use it. So <laughs> thank you, Z-Morph. Thank you so much. It's, it's gonna be in good hands, I promise you. So that is it for today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you want more vlogs, I'm happy to oblige. And yeah, I can, I can start doing these more often, once again. I know I had promised, but once again, I didn't know if you wanted these or not. So, well, yeah, here they are. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, ring that bell for notification because YouTube is, and as always, happy making, guys.